welcome to all of you. It's been a hard work, but now it's everyone's party, as we say. We have to say that we're finally gathered. And we're gathered from 15 countries. It's amazing. It's really, really amazing. And lots of fields are here, working fields, working <coughs> families, working with all kinds of treatment, working with the schools, working in leadership, communities, um, residential setting, child and youth psychiatry, everything. Lots of contexts in the public sector, in the private sector, and, um, and also, just so you know it, with a lot of uh, different languages. So translation is going to be a key word, not only translation in language, but also into, into context. And if uh, just half of us can use a new idea on Monday, it has been worth our time, do you think? You also have to say one thing, is that we are lots of old timers within the NBR. Some know NBR, some love it, some breathe it. There are also today newcomers who actually don't know NBR. So uh, just a bit of warning word for them. We are in a family group now, and some of us really like this. <laughs> okay. I'm a little confused here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a little confused here. We're going to say some special. Do you mind me? Spread the word. Spread the word. The extent the where we are here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, this is you rehearse and you rehearse. And then when you stand here, you don't know what to do. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know what to do. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, <laughs> And so, we have to say that the NBR community has 
really put an effort into this. Thank you so much. We received 40, 48 lovely, lovely abstracts. That's a lot. 48, this is how we do it, things, and we have 12 spaces for workshops. So we made a big decision not to go with the usual suspects, but to just maximize the number of workshops. And we're about, we're having about 30 workshops, I guess. To your confusing pleasure, we know. <laughs> but this is really it, that we wanted people to come together and to show what they have done. And so many have just offered us their own help along the way. Not just support grants, but really come a long way to make the workshops special. They brought mothers, they brought friends, they paid friends, uh, airline tickets, and all kinds of obstacles were put aside to come here. Only one obstacle was not um, easy to put aside, and that was um, uh, passing through Jordanian airspace. So a very special um, uh, presenter called uh, Ahmed, Tawina will unfortunately not be able to be here, but we'll send them our thoughts and we thank those who feel free very much and also thank all the little really trying to get in here. Okay. You will notice another title, and that's mentalization and attachment.
in Scandinavia we don't really like opportunity. But you have to know because otherwise you kind of, you know, there'll be a lot of confrontation and conflicts and escalations and things like that. So this is really the key. We used to be very strong in authority. We don't like kings. Actually, uh, the countries between us are the two countries in the world who have had the most wars in history, registered history, that is. But we have to say that we will go. <laughs> we just put that behind us and let us go on to the fighting. We don't really need authority anymore. Please remember, we're welfare states. That is very, very important to remember. We, we're not just comfortable. It's not comfortable for us talking about authority. Please, what we do like, what we really love, is democracy. Okay? We love to talk about things in an on and on and on and on and on and on. And on. We like to do it in our atmosphere of consent and friendly collaboration with children who really respect us. That's what we like. And uh, we like to do that from an appreciative stance, only appreciative please. From positive to negative, in the consensus, when we all reach some kind of consensus, and we're having a fun time, and we believe. We believe that all motivation really comes from choosing out of interest, you know, free will and what you really want, going with your dreams, welfare dreams, that is. And also, most of all, we just like equality. So whenever we have a discussion, we sit down, because then we're not that different in the heights. <laughs> and we like just looking into each other's eyes. That's what we like. Okay? And please just take a word for it, because the last four years, either Denmark or Swedish have been the most happy and secure people in the world. So, so this is just how we do it. Part of NPR we like. We like the NB a lot. It's only the R that helps us. The wrong way. So that's another key to you. It's a perturbation to a culture, really. It disturbs us. You know, disturbs not just in our daily lives, but in our fluid ideas. It disturbs our childhood. You or your child. It disturbs our preferred positive perspective on life. life. Idea of creativity and also just our, our mentality. But it's a uh, thank you for coming. <laughs> this is a bit about our charity. <coughs> this is what we, on a daily basis, we really treat, teach our children to do. Every morning, every night. We, um, we really think that the obedient child is so long gone, we want them to be self dependent, self initiating. So relying, on choosing, voicing, and in small, small bits of everyday life, we teach them to be sceptical towards authorities, such as teachers, such as parents, such as politicians, helpers, and anyone who might criticise. Be aware of that. We really want them to be self-authorities. So whenever. We hear a sentence like, we fall or we, except Tuesday. We like to go into that positive perspective. Let's work on Tuesday then. <laughs> Can you see the mentality of the half full glass? Even though it's... Okay. We believe in resources. We don't see problems, only challenges. And we are truly second, um, second wave, wave of order systemic. We're very um, aware of defining politics of language. So when Carl yesterday said, you did a mistake, but you can correct them, we know that our kids will go, and who are you to decide that I made a mistake? <laughs> so this is our culture. We're a culture of brainstormers, we like creativity. We know that when a um, labor that doesn't need the same uh, wages that we need will come into our country, the only thing that can save us are brains. So, uh, even though uh, we believe that all ideas are created equal, very equal, all ideas are good, somehow. <laughs> <coughs> and we work with that, and of course,
want to go into the problem, kind of problem, what happened next, who decided what idea we go with. And we have lots of ways to solve that, because each of them just go with <laughs> one own idea. Or we just have your idea one week and my idea the next week, and then <laughs> do like that. That's equality and democracy. <laughs> Sometimes we hear a cry for natural leadership, but it's not a request for authority. <laughs> we like choosing. We like learning by choosing. But what to ask our kids is what we want to do when we grow up. We never love learning by burning. We never know what you have to do to grow up. And so in God is a major shift in logic thought. From design to necessity. It's very strange. So when we're here, when we turn to NVR, it's because we have to. <laughs> Our strategies of non authority as an alternative to traditional authority has run out. And um, the last bit of positiveness in us thinks that maybe what is most foreign to us could also be most rewarding to us. In the beginning, it's hard to grasp and easy to misunderstand. But it has been quite a journey and luckily we have lots of help. So it's such a big relief. <laughs> Just listening to this in the arm thing, being a bit uh, coming to realise that resistance <coughs> is not really just control, maybe not even, but it's a responsible way to be loving. That focus is not the obstacle creativity, but maybe, uh, maybe the basic of it. Necessity is not so bad, bad after all. It helps us to prioritize and to, um, to go together, to practice coordination. And sometimes to be oh, truthful, you can really get fed up with just positive thinking. Just when you say sentences like, we are no longer gonna let you. It's such a and finally, we no longer confuse a lonely and a troubled child with an self authoritarian child. Quite a So thank you for making authority a bit more evident. Context, 
So it's just to give us a background on how we work, as in a say, positive, systemic, narrative, existential red on us, and now also conversation-based, but also very much with the roots in attachment and developmental psychology. What do we know about the development world? Okay, so when we look at problems or challenges, I should say, we believe that, or we see all the time, that when you have too many challenges or problems, in the relations, they also get really weakened because of the unsolved problems. And that can go on for a long time. We see also, of course, that problem, problematic behavior must be seen in the light of the attachment uh, theories of the relation. We see that behavior is not an individual thing, something that should be corrected with one person. But it's, it's also a response to how I am being seen by others. Saying by that, that we know a fact, the attachment, that the child is very loyal to how it's being seen by its surroundings. It will act the way it's being seen. So how can we change the autobiographical narrative, as I said, or the narrative around the child, the view of the child, together with actually changing also what's, um, what needs to be um, more developed in the adult <clears throat> and the system around it. So we have this concept of uh, behavior that is actually an invitation. It's an invitation. What does the child want from you? What's going on? And you're going to see that in some of our work here, where we try to explore that point. What is that, by that behavior, what is the child actually asking you to do? We have worked around NVR um, and, and really put it into these concepts that we like very much. We believe that coordination is a really good way for us to go as practitioners because we can, we can now unite around the priorities focus and the priorities understanding. So instead of going with one idea of one week and one next, let's pick a focus that we work on first. It might not be the most obvious, but let's pick one up that we all can stand around together and also, um, also attach to their needs. So what is this an invitation for? We like the loving footprints a lot. The loving footprints for us are that everyone get around, get involved in relation in any way. So now with this focus, how should we get involved? We like to do it in action, we like to do it in the mind, but we like to do it in the new story that's, that has to be around the child and the child. And then basically attachment. How do we become the parents that our child needs? <clears throat> So what is it exactly? Loving for friends. It's to show actively, you are on my mind. This is the mobilization key. And also just showing in many ways that I have you in mind, whether we are together or not together. It's rediscovering the good life, going back to what was new, but also developing what we want to develop together. We want to recognize, both for the child and for the family around it, is that these, these troubles or these struggles that you have, they didn't start yesterday. There's a story connected to that. When it comes in, into our thinking, we will, we will see during the, our practice. But it didn't try to start yesterday. It's a story connected to being seen that way. So we also see that the problems or the challenges are being uh, responses to how am I being seen that? And therefore, how do I come to understand myself as a child in your eyes? So the whole process of mentalization, and we try to, try to get around the minds and see, hmm, since your child is behaving that way, what kind of child do you think he sees in your mind? Okay. We see many families, families really lacking a good experience of what good health is. They can be over-involved in social services for a long, long time, <laughs> rely very much on professional helpers, and really this cry for support in another way. So how do you get the good help in a way that the child will always also see that this parent is a parent that now relies on support and not the support that will change with the next social work. Mm -hmm. So mentalization is very much part of the process. It's fundamental need to be seen, felt, understood, and be wondered about. about. The whole thing about you don't have to know everything that's goes on in the child here, but keep up the curiosity and really when you don't know and you're going to need the misunderstanding, it's a fantastic.
fantastic way to get from this bad standing away. So we look for misunderstandings now. We started to. And uh, it's a big gift that we actually open that space that we don't have to understand each other all the time. But we need to remember what's good for you and what's good for me. And also we see with the very severe cases that we work in that a lot of the um, constant questions from the child is, are you trustworthy? Can I trust you now? We've been through so much together. I have been sharing your adult life with you. You've put me into so many difficult situations. But how can I trust that we are now on a different road? Should I keep up, up my behavior, behavior as an invitation to see if you stick around? And how can we together, professionals and family systems, create a new story that mm, strength is here, it's gonna stay, it's gonna be different because it's gonna be with support by others this time. It's not something that your parents should rely on all by yourself and, um, and find it yourself. So having this child, having the child mind in mind is demonstrating in these actions between people and how we deal with the behavior. So and what do I actually see? That was why NDR was a great tool for us. Hmm, let's do the baskets. Let's do the priorities. Let's see what we work with first, and then attach to that, what is it a calling for? What do we need to add in relation to, for it to be trustworthy? Okay, <clears throat> we have very into brains. 2016, no presentation without the brain. Does that not help? Yeah? Okay. So the, the, and we're very into how can we read each other's needs. We are into looking at the child's brain together with everyone around and see and ask these questions. How do you see me, Benjamin? Do you see me as a reliable parent? Do you see me be, being bigger and stronger, wiser and kind? What the attachment research say that we should be? And do you think that I see your needs and your needs to explore, to be organized, to get out there, to come back to me and to get filled your emotional cup? Can I see myself through your eyes? And um, can, re can this relation, what do I need to do to get this relation going in a trustworthy way? Um, what can I do to see myself as a trusted life guide? We're not doing this for parent blaming reasons. We don't believe, as you heard, in any kind of blaming. We're doing this, this as a recognition of, of course, there's also some very good explanation of why parents, adults, have this thinking about the child and, and why, how and they have needs too. So we want to find out what they need to be able to, to think about the child. So, we have loved the announcement. We use it in all kinds of ways for teams to decide what to do next, for schools to decide on their rules, to work individually with every family member, from children to parents, from grandparents to parents to children. We just loved it as a process too. It gave us something very, very important. So we use it as an ongoing tool in our process. In, whether it's an assessment or a treatment. This is like a traveling document of how do I see myself in relation to the child? How do I see myself at the moment and what kind of needs do I need to respond to? We found out that these announcements are often just for the parent himself or for the team. Sometimes we don't even have to get any further because in discovering the whole process and the self-awareness, Things will start to change because the child and mind is different through this announcement. But the whole documentation and the who shall have this letter to know that you are doing this work just starts many, many levels of support. We see it as a script to get organized yourself. So before, because of the adapting thinking and the mentalization, start to mentalize yourself before mentalizing others. Find out what you need yourself before you can help others. And when you write that letter, do you put your own words? 
And when you listen to that with your child's ears, would you believe what you're saying here? So just a small example. <clears throat> about Hector and William. They experienced a lot of trauma in their life. They uh, have a very insecure mom. She really doubts her actions. And she has very good reasons to by the experiences she had in her life. And um, she is uh, feeling really let down by supporting her family. Because even in this society with a lot of democratic and frequently and good times together, so many people feel quite alone. And the whole thing about engaging in a family culture is often something we encounter with, no, 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 my mother should not be involved. I would like to keep up another kind of race. So there's an ongoing history with that. But she has relied on health and social services for a long, long time, ever since, it, since she was pregnant the first time. And um, the, the boys really doubt her strength. Hector was taken into psychiatry as five year old but also from ADHD, normal school, but as as we see it, there's a lot of other issues that could be tackled or rather a lot of other ways to see his behavior as invitations to her. <laughs> William is an extremely has an extremely violent behavior. He will run out from it in school and he cannot be there uh, for a long time. And he looks for the person who would like to be close to him. He attracts, or he finds the person with the big hearts, and he just wants to crawl into them. So, the task was here to try to see, can we get some organization going? Can we get some organization going where they try to start to trust the mom to be the leading figure in their life, and a person that they could rely on? <clears throat> So we brain scan, because that's what we do. But first we brain scan, had the mother brain scan the, the mind of the children. And say, of course they're two different children, but they might have something in common. So what do they have in common of the thinking of you? They're both afraid, they're both lacking protection, and they're both worried. That's the middle brain, you see. But they're also very different. One will say things aloud. Boys? Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Hector is a 10 year old brain, and William is a 12 year old brain. So, this is the mother's guessing how, how are their feelings around me in their mind? What are they calling for? At the same time, the children read the mind of the mother. They go immediately for her fearful thoughts. Ten year old is not good at writing, but he draws what he thinks he, she's thinking. He's afraid that someone will kidnap them, you think? That someone will run away with them in the middle of the night on the streets by the walk on the school. And they're afraid that maybe their dad or others will say, ha ha, I got the children away from me. The big one, and they do this together together by mm -hmm. And the big one tried to write. He says, if she's afraid that they get taken by him or his friends, then she's afraid they're gonna meet him in the street and pull us away. And she's afraid that uh, there's gonna be a burglary, burglary in the house. And when the mother saw this presentation, she did because they immediately scanned the biggest fear. She never slept with mother. She thought she had kept a big smile and had a good day through her. She was so distressed because she was so afraid of someone coming in the middle of the night. They never talked about it, but they sensed it. So going behind the screen or going into the brain and trying to guess and wonder is not for looking at the right answer, but also to actually find out how much do we need about how much do we know about each other even though we don't talk about it. Let's put away the problematic behavior just for a moment while we look for the good reasons why you are so sad and angry. So, we went for the mental life announcement. <clears throat> First to the mother, as how do I see you? How do I see you, my darling children? How do I understand your needs and your thoughts? 
intention for feeling? What do I think we need for me to feel better and more secure? And not only for me, but also for others. What should my priorities be in the near future? What should I absolutely stop doing? And what should I start doing? We found out parents, they tell totally love these questions. Teachers as well, family therapists as well. It's just the best question. What do you want to start doing tomorrow on that? What do you want to start doing that? It's to get your priorities in your head so you can address the right time. Who do you want to do it with? And why do you think that you deserve this in your life? Now I can see something nice in here. Oh! So this is like a part of the process. We're going we're gonna to give all of the slides to you, this conference, by the way, on the website after. We're gonna get to but then, um, just to read it for you in the back, this was a part, this was one of the first announcements for her. It was not giving to the children, it was for her as a process too. Dear Hector and William, you're my cute, clever, lively, and loving boys, and I love the life you share. I love to spend time with you. You're interesting, you're brave, and you're courageous. You are truly my boys. We have the last years experiencing some hard times together. We have been experiencing violence towards you and me, and we have felt very unsafe. We have been living in a crisis center, and you went into foster care for a while because I could not take care of our everyday life. Things are different now but you still have doubts about my strength. I sense this when you, Hector, try to forget me holding me on the phone 40 times a day and want to discuss things with me and check if I'm okay. And William, your anger and sadness, sadness leads to you hitting me and Hector. Together with the people that loves us, I have decided that things need to change and I have decided that things will change around us the way our conflicts and discussions will take place in the future. It has to be different, because you need me in a different way, and we need each other in another way. And we need and deserve a good family life in a good and loving atmosphere. We have had lots of troubles in our lives, and you have suffered with schools and disappointments, and I've had all the good reasons to be sad and angry. But things are better now. We have good schools. We have friends and we have family around us, I want to talk about all the experiences you have had, and you can show me how you feel and what you long for. But I cannot longer accept that it happened in an aggressive or demanding way. Therefore, I will no longer try to hold you when you get angry with me, and I will not have all those conversations, conversations on the phone with you. I will do all I can not to escalate the situation with my shouting and kicking on the small things. I will ask for help from the people that support us all, and I will find ways to leave the escalation situation. Not because I don't want to help you, but it's because I will find a better way to do it. I'll always come back to you. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to spend time with you together, and together and with each of you. I want to laugh, and I want to have fun with you. So in the future, I'll do everything I can to keep my mind calm when things get rough for you. I don't want a power struggle with words or with our bodies, so instead I will pull back so things don't escalate further. I want the best for us, and many people care for us and want a good life. I and we will team up with them when it is needed. I am your mother. I love you, and I look forward to the life we will share.
social services is a very action-oriented organization. They demand peace. And so with the family, when you see families, it's not a question of if they want to change or not. They have to change. They need to change because she's got to risk. So in that context, in he, his work in an outpatient clinic like I do, you see all kinds of families coming up. You see them for one, one time or you see them during a year or whatever. So, and all kinds of problems. So we are very pragmatic at that. So we do, I have my basic training, I have my drawing theories about family therapy, but in that context, you need to have a very broad repertoire to see all these kinds of families. So, I, yesterday I went to a, uh, I went to a see yesterday, Denise Wilson and Margaret Smith, they did a wonderful, workshop yesterday. For those of you who are not there, you missed something, but they promised to upload their PowerPoint to our website. Anyway, they talked about NVR, how it is um, blends so well with other approaches. So that was very put well. They put it very well, because that's exactly how we think about it. So, and, and furthermore, I was listening to Aya and Heim yesterday. They were talking about how they were stealing things from one another and stuff like that. I don't think we steal. I think we borrow. <laughs> Everybody borrows things. Why should we invent the wheel again? Of course you borrow. All the big shops borrow things from one another and then you incorporate it and make it something of your own. And uh, I have a mentor. His name is Jorge Colapinto and his, his estate, he used, he used to work with Venusian for many years and we had a program once and we developed this uh, kind of motto or you know, assumption about people, and it goes like this. Professionals should not be experts on children's needs and provide these needs. Professionals should be experts on what children need from the parents to develop and have the parents provide their children's needs. Yes, because when you, have, when you have that mindset, so for me, it's very natural to work when I, children come to our clinic. It's very natural for us to work with the whole family. So we see the kids and the, and the parents together a lot. So um, I know I, I keep there, you know, the time. Does he have time? Oh, you are. Very, very good. Anyway, so let's, uh, I want to talk much more now. I'll present the case to you. This is uh, about Anna. She's 16 years old. She's not attending school very well. She's doing drugs now and then. She has a 25-year-old boyfriend. She's had a history of having older boyfriends. And she's at risk. Clearly, she's at risk. She lives, she lives a very independent life, but you know, as a young adult. The family lives in a big apartment, so she, she lives in one of the other, she has her own bathroom, so and the parents live here. So they never meet. They never hang out together. She's always out. So the, the family also they're worried. So and so we work with them. And I, I do this with a colleague. It's Corinne. She, she, you, you will meet her very soon again. Uh, and uh, suddenly I get, we get a call from the mother because she's very upset because this girl is going to a kind of regular drug test. And the latest test showed that she was very positive on amphetamine. And that made the mother go berserk because that the girl had raised the level of drugs. She had done this with her boyfriend. <coughs> so they come. Uh, they're very upset. It's like, so here we have I'm very upset by the whole girl she, this is the mother, she's very upset, you know. No, no, please sit there, please sit there. Uh, I will take care of you. So this is fine. Can I to do something? Because that's really getting out of it. Please, fine. Sit. Thank you. Thank you. Colin, where are you? I need you. Come on, buddy. So I'm happy to make it. Hey, no, no, no. Okay, so so I, I want to sit there, okay? So this is Anna. <laughs> Anna. You sit down now. Yeah. Good talk, yes. Good talk. Um, okay, so now we have five minutes 
into the session. And now I, you know, I know you will identify yourself with, you know. We have four, we have four um, different positions there. You have the therapist, you have the 16 year old, the mother, and the father. Oh, besides, uh, they have really, they said that Mike is her stepfather, but he's been around since she was one years old. And when they say that, I mean, I don't, he's not, in my case, my opinion, he's not her stepfather, he is her father. Because the father is, is never sees him and he's um, an alcoholic who is not around. So, here we are. Mike is very upset. I cannot believe it. What are you thinking? This is dangerous stuff. I have to take it. I mean, we've been telling you, is he 25? What are you doing with your life? You're a very nice girl, but this is just, what are you thinking? This is not okay. We, you and my mother, have told you again and again, take care of yourself. For God's sake, she was 17? It is. Going on 17. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Listen, my, my, I can understand you're very worried. Say something. Say something. I can understand. You're upset. You're worried. More than worried. More than I know, I know. Please, can I, you know, if you talk all at the same time, I get lost. So can you put me, I said, talk one at a time? Okay. Can I ask you something, Mom? When Mike is clearly very upset and very worried, and uh, I, could, I could see that something was going on with uh, Anna here. She was, I can't figure out what it was. Can you, can you? Yes. Please, uh, you know that look? Sorry? Sad. Sad. She's sad and confused. Okay. I know that she had been in when life is really hard, I can speak it. So? It's just that, um, Sam doesn't have a But if you want to be a home, it has to be a home dad. Not just a critical one. Jesus. Okay, let's. You're upset, and you said something very important here. But I <coughs> have yes, to take a little break here. And uh, I will sit down with you, and then we come back and you can sit there. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm in the break? Hmm? Hmm? What? I'm in the break? Oh, yes, you should. Okay, now, now what happened here, a lot of things happened here, and you can do this in many, many ways. But here you have, you have brains here, you know. What? <laughs> Lots of brains, so... Yesterday, you at the back row, you come. So, Paul, Paul, please tell, 
What do we want people to do now? Now, okay. What do I want them to do? Yeah, put yourself in, in this position. What would you, uh, what do you think is going on in the therapy? You know, because mentalization, we're talking about that, is also something that we do, therapy. We are thinking about other people, the people we meet, the clients, we try to put ourselves in their position, the children's position, and we try to help kids express, you know, we are working like that all the time. So put yourself in these different positions. And just to support you, so consider this an exercise of wondering. This is a stop up moment, and right now, from that small five minutes, what is going on in each of these persons' brain? What is going on in their, about themselves, about the others, about how the other sees them? So you can do the brain scan from just like a thousand different angles, whatever you want to see. What is going on about, hey, where's the love and footprints? What's going on about, uh, when can I, how can I stop this behavior? You can be very specific when you ask to what's going on in the brain. So just for yourself, think about the angles that you could be occupied with with this case. Just a two, three minutes chat with the person next to you. Okay. Um, four minutes chat with the person next to you. Or maybe turn back and talk to yep. people. Find your name and say hello and present yourself.
She understands what she needs. Okay? But what we talked about, the three of us, was that these are two examples of how we pick and choose and how we use the mindset, the anchoring, how we make pauses, how we make different moves to take different steps, all in the are inspired. And we combine it with the things that we love to do <coughs> otherwise. But in some way, it strengthens everything we do because we just met the end. So that was one of the things. <coughs> what can we say? NDR make us go long on the liter. One point? Make us drive a little long on the liter. When we drive. Together with us. Okay, we need our self brains back. Post. And we have a break till a quarter to 11.